On a mysterious pinpoint in the Pacific Ocean called Easter Island, a gathering of stone giants guards the shore. No one knows who carved them, why they exist, or how the 50-ton monsters were put into place. Yet they're here, unexplainable gargantuan pieces in affling mystery. In the jungles of Central America, colossal stone heads were discovered 80 miles from where they were originally carved. Weighing 100 tons, there is no clue as to how they were transported through dense swamp. Nor do we know who moved them to this remote jungle. Long before the Egyptians built the pyramids, someone constructed a vast stone city atop a peak in the Andes. The ruins stand empty and silent. Each carving is a disconnected figure from the past, yet some common origin might join them together. The earth itself bears the portraits of still other giants scratched onto a plateau in California 10,000 years ago. Others were etched with precision into an English hillside long before the building of Stonehenge. The tools to carve and move the giants indicate an advanced technology. There is a place where the knowledge and skills to create the giants may be found, the kingdom of Atlantis. Never before have explorers been so close to finding Atlantis. Never have we possessed as many clues, nor have we been able to bring the detection equipment of modern science to the search until now. column may be all that remains of an entire civilization blasted apart by an incredible explosion. Atlantis. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, the island of Atlantis disappeared in the depths of the sea. So wrote the Greek philosopher Plato in the year 421 BC. Since then, adventurers obsessed by the tale of Atlantis have searched for traces of the remains of the fabled kingdom. Atlantis was said to have been a great city-state ruled by a race of men supposedly descended from the gods. Was it a real city, a wondrous land, or a myth, a tale created by someone's wild imagination? If Atlantis existed, it would have been a place where technology was far more advanced than anywhere else on Earth. To discover such a city, we may use as clues descriptions that can be found in the writings of the great Greek philosopher, Plato. At first, a small Greek island in the Aegean seemed an unlikely place to start the search, for Plato had written of a great and wonderful empire. They had conquered almost all of Africa, he reported, and more than half of Europe. Such a kingdom hardly fits the image of a tiny island like Santorini. In 1966, however, the remains of an ancient building were dug from beneath 250 feet of ash and lava. Its broken walls signal the first discovery of a great city. Today, only small villages cling to the Santorini mountainsides. But the island was once a large, circular landmass. 
3,500 years ago, it was shattered by an incredible volcanic explosion. All that remains is a thin crescent of mountain and a sullen, smoldering volcano that erupts at least twice a century. The volcano that destroyed the island Plato knew as Thera may also have hidden all evidence of Atlantis. In many ways, the ruins are like those found elsewhere in the Aegean, reminiscent of the Minoan civilization. Then, reading Plato and viewing the broken walls and shattered pots, a sudden chilling discovery is made. These ruins fit Plato's description of Atlantis with an uncanny accuracy. They constructed buildings about them and planted suitable trees, wrote Plato. Whatever fragrant things there now are in the earth or woods, or essences which distill from fruit and flower, grew and thrived in that land. They had such an amount of wealth as was never possessed by kings and potentates, and is not likely ever to be again. The entire area was densely crowded and kept up a multitudinous sound of human voices, of din and clatter of all sorts, night and day. There were the king's baths, and there were separate baths for women. And to each of them, they gave as much adornment as possible. There were many temples built and dedicated to the gods, also gardens and places of exercise. Plato tells us the citizens of Atlantis were skilled engineers, astronomers, and architects. He describes buildings and tools. And time after time, we see in the ruins of Santorini the almost eyewitness accuracy of his account. The clockwork gears fished from the Aegean Sea are part of an ancient computer. It was used to plot the course of the planets and stars across the skies of Greece. The first modern computer was built in 1930, yet these gears were fashioned 2,000 years earlier. Based on a highly advanced understanding of physics, mathematics, and astronomy, there's nothing else like it in classical Greek technology, but it may have derived its origin from Plato's Atlantis. The ruins on Santorini match Plato's description, but one piece of the puzzle refuses to fall into place. Despite the opinion of some experts that here indeed are the remains of Atlantis, Plato himself seems to suggest it lies elsewhere. We must search, he tells us, beyond the Pillars of Hercules. The Pillars of Hercules are today known as the Rock of Gibraltar. Therefore, Santorini, an island in the Aegean east of Gibraltar, could not be Atlantis. It must lie to the west in the Atlantic Ocean. In a moment, we shall continue our search for Atlantis beneath the oceans, thousands of miles from Plato's ancient Greece. The geography of the Earth is not constant. Dry land was once covered by ocean. What is now seabed was once mountain and forest. The Atlantic Ocean that now separates the Americas from Europe and Africa is so familiar, it's hard to imagine a time when it was not always there. But once, a great landmass stretched over what is now the Atlantic Ocean, bridging the Mediterranean and the Caribbean. Beneath the surface of both of those seas are the broken remains of ancient cities. They may represent the eastern and western ports of Atlantis. The search for the eastern border of Atlantis begins just beyond Gibraltar in the Spanish city of Cadiz. Once a Phoenician port, Cadiz is among the oldest cities in Europe. Here, Dr. Maxine Asher of the Ancient Mediterranean Research Association met Spanish diver Francisco Salazar Casero. Two and a half miles offshore, 
and 95 feet deep on the continental shelf, Cassero found an ancient amphora. It had lain among the ruins of a city older, he said, than any of the Greek and Phoenician remains in the area. And here, the mystery of Atlantis is complicated by the modern world. According to Dr. Asher, the Spanish government revoked their permission to dive at the site. Spanish politics, she says, have prevented further underwater exploration off Cadiz. Although halted, the Asher expedition produced a significant find. It indicates that the east coast of Atlantis might have been precisely where Plato had placed it. As he said, beyond the pillars of Hercules. There is other evidence to support Plato's description of an island that was greater than Africa and Asia together. Ancient maps have led geographers to explore the possibility that the Antarctic slowly drifted south in the wake of a massive upheaval. Whatever the reason, we know that once it was part of a much larger landmass. The western edge of that land may lie here, beneath the crystal waters of the Caribbean. The actual discovery, however, is no more astonishing than the man who predicted its very existence. These strange blocks were first seen in a vision by the most remarkable mystic of all time, Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce was known as the sleeping prophet. Hundreds of astonishingly accurate predictions are cataloged in the archives of the foundation which bears his name. In 1939, Edgar Cayce predicted the end of World War II and his own death. Both events, he said, would take place in 1945. He was right. He foresaw the freedom of India from England, the death of John Kennedy, and a number of geological changes that are still to take place. Edgar Cayce's most remarkable prophecy, however, concerns a lost kingdom. Geological upheavals, he said, would bring about the rediscovery of Atlantis. Casey saw Atlantis breaking up into five islands, the largest he called Poseidia. And Poseidia will be among the first portions of Atlantis to rise again, expected in 68 or 69. That prediction was made in 1940. In 1967, a pilot flying over the Bahamas sighted a rectangular structure beneath the crystal clear waters. It was precisely where Casey had said Atlantis would be, under the slime of ages of seawater, near what is known as Bimini, off the coast of Florida. And here they lie, huge white blocks chiseled with incredible precision and covering a large area of ocean bottom. No one knows how they got here 35 feet beneath the sea off the coast of Bimini, but here they are found. Two possible explanations exist. One, the stones are the remains of a network of paved roads. Two, they are the tops of huge stone walls that once enclosed the palaces of Atlantis. Author Peter Tompkins filmed the work of an expedition that hoped to locate Atlantis using clues from Casey's writings. Aboard were Count Pino Turola, an Italian archaeologist, underwater explorer Dmitri Rebikov, and archaeologist Dr. David Zink. This expedition was to produce one of the most startling finds ever made in the search for Atlantis. Beyond the giant blocks, the divers discovered the remains of several ships. One had gone down in the year 1830. Beneath it lay the fragments of still another ship, one that had sailed the seas more than 3,000 years ago. Not a ship of Atlantis, certainly, but according to Yale's Dr. J. Manson Valentine, a voyager from Phoenicia. 
The Phoenicians were the greatest sea traders of ancient times. Their ships called at every port in the known world. Could it be that Phoenician traders came more than 5,000 miles from the site of classical Mediterranean civilization to deal with a rich and fabled kingdom? The question posed by the wrecks and the blocks of the Bimini Wall remained unanswered as the expedition continued to explore the waters off Bimini. South of the wall, Pino Tirola, a leading underwater explorer, discovered four marble columns. At first, it was thought they were bits of ballast from a wrecked ship. After days of diving and investigation, Tirola developed a different theory. He believes that the columns could be 12,000 years old, actual relics of a center constructed in stone and marble. There are more tests to be made. Geologic dating of these and the expedition's other finds could confirm the explorer's theory that here is Atlantis. Here is the fabled world. Here, ships may have visited a crowded port. Here, marketplaces may have been filled with the multitudinous sound of human voices that Plato told us about. The din and clatter of all sorts, night and day. The broken columns may be all that remains of an entire civilization blasted apart by an incredible explosion. At every one of the sites we have investigated, there are artifacts of a remarkable civilization. But nowhere can we find the remains of the people who once lived in Atlantis. Plato may have explained it when he said the people of Atlantis were warned of impending disaster and they fled. No one has ever investigated this aspect of Plato's account. But if it is correct, the clues to where the Atlanteans went next may be contained in the giant megaliths that guard the lonely outposts of the world. At Easter Island, atop the Andes at Tiwanaku, in the jungles of Central America at La Venta, we can find the final clues to the mystery. These monoliths may tell us where the refugees, the engineers, astronomers, and architects fled, carrying the technology and culture of Atlantis. If so, we can begin to understand why the great cultures of the past bear such striking similarities. Egypt, one of the greatest of ancient civilizations, is symbolized by its pyramids. So too does the pyramid mark the ruins of this highly advanced Mayan society. There are other similarities. The Egyptian temple of Amen-Ra at Karnak is aligned with the sun. Only at the time of the summer solstice, the sun strikes the central chamber of the temple, known to the ancient Egyptians as the high room of the sun. 8,000 miles away, in the remote peaks of the Andes, the Inca marked the seasonal solstices with this monument. Using almost the same words as the Egyptians, they called it the hitching post of the sun. Perhaps the most remarkable record of the exodus from Atlantis is preserved in the 1,500-year-old pottery of a Peruvian tribe called the Mochica. In their vases and utensils, they depicted Orientals and Negroes, Arabs, Indians, Egyptians, and Greeks people who might have been known to each other in Atlantis. In the stones and bones of the past, we've made a startling discovery. 
there is a common origin for many widely dispersed ancient civilizations. In the tombs of Peru, we see similarities with other cultures, with the Mayans, with the Egyptians. In the development of mathematics and astronomy, we see links that may reach back to a common origin in Atlantis. And most startling of all is the shared belief in eternal life. In fragrant linen, buried amidst the treasures of their world, they seek the hereafter, guided by their ancestral traditions. Perhaps their ancestors were the people of Atlantis. We have attempted to piece together the jigsaw puzzle of history that has been scattered by disaster. In so doing, we've found what may be the only remaining traces of the lost kingdom of Atlantis. Of one thing we can be certain, the memory of Atlantis is no myth, it is history. The tale of Atlantis was first told by the priests of Egypt to a Greek poet named Solon. They assured him that the original archive containing the tale of Atlantis still existed. That was 3,000 years ago. In one of his last prophecies, Edgar Cayce said that the archives of Atlantis would one day be revealed in Egypt. Soon, a new expedition will begin the re-exploration of the pyramids of Egypt, searching among the hieroglyphs and tomb paintings for the absolute proof that once, back before the beginnings of history, a marvelously advanced civilization of human beings once ruled the earth from an island continent called Atlantis. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena, in search of cameras are traveling the world, seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.